Echo episode four and five. Our final thoughts. Did it live up to the expectations? Or are we feeling a little disappointed? Let's talk about it. All right, guys, Brent here back with the man, the myth, the Marvel, Will Parker, where we cover all things Marvel, DC, Lord of the Rings, anime, gaming, and more. This time, Echo, episodes four and five, which is the finale of this nice little short series that we had. And I'm going to lead off with this one. And I got to say, Vincent D'Onofrio, Kingpin, exceptional job. Everything about his acting from episode one to episode five needs to be talked about. Everything about the actress playing Echo whose name I don't know and will come and correct me on. Phenomenal job, episode one, two, five. A lot cool. Hats off to them. Fantastic. I think uh, Biscuits was great. I think Henry was great. I really think Henry shined, like, way more than I thought he was going to. Like, the bowling alley owner really liked him. Thought he was funny. Thought he was on point. He was talking about things that need to be talked about. But at the same time, while the action was good... The acting was good. The story fell very flat for me right at the end here. I'm going to heal you with my magic finger touch. And you have a gun. And you hate me. And I just eased your memory and you aren't going to shoot me? That's the second time in five episodes where there was a gun pointed directly at our main character... Or through the happenstance of plot, or imagination, if you will, Echo hasn't died. I understand cool superpowers, great moveset, copycat to an extreme level, total BA, you drive a motorcycle because you're tough, but bullets and lives, that's just the way it works. And any good villain, I feel like knows how to pull a trigger on a gun, and that just frustrates me to no end just seeing people in this perfect situation where they have you dead to rights and like a James Bond-esque over elaborate plot where I want you to outthink yourself and you have to survive sharks with freaking laser beams attached to their freaking head for the sake of my evil entertainment for you to get out of things just for you to get out of it because you're in touch with your ancestors like it's cool. It's meaningful. It's impactful. I think they did a great service to the Choctaw tribe. I think that was super cool and really well done in the end. It took a little warming up to it, but it felt like it paid off the right way, which is saying a lot. But at the same time, the magic finger touch is how we're going to end this series. And then Kingpin is now going to run for office like Everything's healed because they used literally every trigger word describing him in this like little running commercial thing that they had going on for the news. I mean, I get pieces fall into place perfectly sometimes. But this show, for how much you advertised having Daredevil to give us a three-minute blip, Disney, I see you. I know you put butts in seats that way because we're all rooting for him to be back. But you lied to us. This series was whelming at best for me. Even with Vincent Onofrio, Echo, Henry, and Biscuits being fantastic. 7 out of 10 is the best I can give this. Will, come and tell me what I missed. <laughs> tell me what I got wrong. Just have fun with it because I took up a good right. two minutes of time there. No, let's, let's talk about it. All right. First off, a lot of story exposition. Uh, a lot of this was, you know, we're getting the, the background. We're getting the, you know, more of where Kingpin came from and how he kind of ended up where he's at as far as his rage issues, his violence and stuff. Um, I think that, of course, with that character, uh, him having uh, the emotion. I do like the emotional touch at the end where he's kind of, you know, He's kind of going through it and kind of having to relive that trauma. I do like that touch. I don't really care about the way it was gone about. And I'll get to that in a second. As you far as superpowers? As far as Echo is concerned, again, I like Echo. She's doing her thing. 
the fights were good. So, uh, there was a couple things, and you know, I didn't mention this in the first part, but uh, like Vicky and friends, they were like some of the dumbest criminals in the world, like very easily dispatched, obviously, but that was just unnecessary. But we get the resurgence of uh, the the other guy. Uh, can't remember his name. The the ball guy with the rocket launcher. That uh, again, he was forgettable at best for the most part. But it's like he shows up with a squad of people, you know, to do Kingpin's bidding. And again, these guys are easily dispatched after you know guns being blocked and stuff. Like a couple hip tosses and stuff like that, and they're out the picture. It's like. I like the fighting rink, you know, the skating rink, because there's a lot more gunshots and actually, you know, nice, you know, kills sort of that. The suplex onto the machine, stuff so, like fantastic. The uh, the the gun whips, so sort of that absolutely loved it. That this kind of fight was kind of meh. This the uh, the comic relief uh, was scared to miss dinner with with grandma and grant. I, I like him, but he went from being scared to miss dinner with with grandma to. I got a monster truck and I'm going to run over these guys who make no attempt to get out in any capacity. So I guess they're just pinned in like sardines. Little stuff like that was just kind of bothering me. Um, but yeah, the the magic finger touch. Yeah, I didn't agree with that at all. That just kind of seemed like a cheap. Disrespectful to the character. Like, honestly. On both ends. Like, both parties were done wrong by this move. I, I think. Honestly, I would have expected more of a fight, more of like I, maybe she get wounded and stuff. Like it's a and, show about healing. I get it. That's the message. And then but. she could, you know, she's got to slowly like, and maybe she, you know he come, if you want to still do that emotional scene, maybe he comes at her to like because he likes to get hands on to like choke her out some of like that, and then she does it to like force the trauma on him, and then he's just kind of discombobulated, and his guy get him out of there, but she's wounded. And you could end it that way. I'd have been better. I'd have been better about that. This then it's like, okay, she's down and out. He's, you know, now mentally down and out. That cops are on the way. Yo, boss, we gotta get out of here. Cool. Makes more sense. He was already dragging out before the cops even, you know, showed up, and she's just standing there like, I wanted to kill you, but now I'm not gonna kill you. I'm gonna be more of a, you know, nicer person, I guess, in terms of that. Because, I mean, it's obviously she. You know, Kingpin has cared for her over the years, so uh, I get that there's a little bit of emotion there as far as how she feels for him. But the fact is that she shot him in the face. I can write off that emotion at this point. Like she, she cared not, and she's doing. So the fact that he's back, why does she feel more for him? The fact that she's back, you know, is it because of the, you know, getting the, the story of the trauma? Is that what did it for? Because it felt like she was already kind of leaning that way when she first saw him. I think the tra- the the story of his trauma, then that maybe could have, you know, kind of put her over the edge. But I think it was kind of out of order. It's like she was already, he already said it. He's like, when you saw me, you already felt something. And she allowed him to stay and have dinner. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm over it. <laughs> like this um, could have been before Hawkeye and it would have made more sense. It, 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 it could have made a bit more sense uh depending on how they wanted to do it and i would have to sit here and theory craft it fully to, to really flush it out but i wasn't necessarily too happy with that uh other than that the show wasn't bad uh, i don't think that uh i think she's still got to get the the full scope of her powers uh i don't understand the uh the, the passing the power on to everyone else thing uh i know they're all connected to a degree so like i kind of get it a little bit uh, Whoever has the sword and shouts, "I have the power!" Yeah, I just, and then now I, you just give it to everybody else. Like it's literally Captain Planet and friends. Like, cool, this is exciting. We all got our rings. Good for us. Yeah, I just think that with this and stuff, like again, I don't like it when characters, you know, they get their powers and they progress through their powers so quickly. And again, I get with the uh, mimicking the abilities with that. Like that's kind of an instant thing for her. But you know. The knowing how to use the healing, all that kind of stuff. Like, I guess, you know, again, it's just kind of learned from the ancestors, and she can now automatically do it when she didn't know what she was doing, you know, three days Something ago. Something instinctual. If yeah. You know. So, there's, it's just, it, it's hit or miss and stuff with me. Like, I'm not super knocking it, so like that, but at the same time, it's kind of like, eh, I, you know, I probably would have done it a little bit differently. But again, I'm not the writer, so I'm just kind of enjoy what it is. But this definitely sets up for with Kingpin. 
going to run as the mayor of New York, it looks like. So we're going to get a whole lot of that probably in Daredevil. You when cannot, that decides to drop. You cannot not have Spider-Man have an appearance in some point in time within this New York thing happening. I'm not saying he's got to show up in the show. I really don't want him to show up in the show. Like, unless it's like, the only way I wouldn't mind him showing up in the show, if it's time, like the movie is next. Like they're they're teasing the movie. And it's like, this is how they're going to announce the Spider-Man 4 movie or something like that. And then you finish setting up for that. Cool, I can do that. But you can't have Kingpin going to run as the mayor of New York and not have Spider-Man, Daredevil, Punisher, all present. And depending on if they want to bring in the rest of the defenders at some point, we'll see. Like Iron Fist, like they can actually, like the way Iron Fist works is like you cannot have a new Iron Fist until the old Iron Fist dies. So if they want to kill off Iron Fist, because let's say most of us want to. Kingpin off them. We, off screen, yeah. accelerate the process. Yeah. We don't need they, any emotional passing, just next. Then you can get a new Iron Fist uh, if you wanted to, to, to go that route. Uh, Electra still in play. Um, he's calling up like, the head still there, so we pretty sure we still got some hand members, you know, on standby. You got you know different you know factions and stuff with Sinister Six kind of in play. Um, Kingpin has teamed up with several different notable you know villains in the Spider-Man Rogues Gallery, so there's a lot of options as to who he could be calling and who he could be setting up. Like we got to see how it's gonna roll, and all this takes place within the MCU. So we also have Spider-Man there, which Venom is a factor because Venom is kind of floating free in there. So we could we could have a back in black moment or something at some point, you know. Uh, I mean, that was more or less with with his family, Ame, who you know he's kind of solo so sort of that. But we could have him in the, like if we see him in the black suit going up against Kingpin, that'll be enough. It's just like a you'll a need reference. to build up significant amount of tension between them and have it make sense. Yeah, you, you, you have just to. assume it's like everyone knows that they hate each other. Yeah, no, you, you no, gotta, no, we don't. You you got to build it up. You already have the the background there with Daredevil, uh, referencing Spider Man and Spider Man kind of dealing with a lot of the street crime, so he could see a lot of it leading back to Kingpin at some point. And then of course Daredevil is going to be able to fill him in. Like you can have Daredevil fill him in, and that kind of clears a whole lot of exposition out the way. Echo already knows what's going on. You can have Echo, you know, run into Spidey at some point. Kate Bishop is still in New York, for all we know. Kate Bishop is present, but due to the Marvels, it looks like she's being pulled in that direction, so she may not be in New York. She may be teamed up with Kamala Khan already and headed off to do Young Avenger stuff. Don't know. So she is a factor, possibly. And then you got to take on whoever else is available. I mean, Strange the, still resides in New York, but I don't know if this this would fall well beneath his purview his, of I care. And he he just walked through a portal, you know, with, with Clea. Like, he's he's off to go do that stuff. So he's not With present. his horribly animated third eye. Yeah. That looks like it could have been done in 2000. <laughs> this 2000. So, it was bad. <laughs> so the, these are options of stuff that we have to work with. So, again... Spider-Man fully in play with Daredevil and the rest of the Defenders are a possibility and Echo. Like this is who, and Punisher, of course. You know, this is who we have to work with. Um, so again, street level. Like what direction are they gonna go with it? Because they're gonna be running street level, it looks like concurrently with whatever world level threat is happening. And again, we have Kang on the horizon. We don't know if Miss Marvel, like I don't even know if they're running three different ones because with Kang and the whole, you know, Jonathan Majors having to be, you know, recast or if they're going to scrap the storyline, what are they doing? All that stuff's up in the air right now. So we got to see how they're going to deal with that threat there. So are we going to have an Avenger level threat, a young Avenger level threat, and then a street level threat kind of going on at the same time and getting this sorted out? But then the X Men are also in play thanks to the Marvels. So now that we have the X Men in play, where are the X Men going to reside in? Are they going to team up? Are we going to have any of them? teaming up with anything here in 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 within these three factions that I've mentioned, or are they going to still be doing their own thing in a separate universe? Like they're just operating over here. Like this is what these are the questions I have. These are what I need to know. But again, Marvel's going to re, you know reveal everything in time. And I think we'll get a couple more answers when we get Deadpool three 
at some point. So, and just for you guys who are new to the channel, are aware when Will spends more time talking about theory crafting than the actual show, the actual show was pretty bad. It all just so where everyone is aware, and anytime a Marvel fan saying it's all leading up to this, that's their way of saying, Don't talk about my baby like this because it was bad, and we don't want yeah. you looking at it. You have to look big picture because that's Kevin Feige's MO, even though when the Avengers are being formed, we didn't say that because each movie was pretty dang solid, so we didn't have to worry about going on to we'll skip three or four projects. Then, hey, Guardians of the Galaxy 3, Spider Man 4, Deadpool 3. Don't pay attention to anything else that's failing. No, 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 you I'm might not have because Aquaman blew up the marbles. That's when you know things are bad. And it's done anyway. So look, I'm not even mad at what's been going on. Like I just understand what I need to look forward to. When I talk about what it is that I want to look forward to or what possibilities, it's because I'm hoping for something better on the horizon. If I was to give Echo a rating right now, so that I would probably give it a six. Wow, you were harsher than I was. It and wasn't I'm the one that it sounds wasn't, very negative. It wasn't horrible, but at the same time, again, it's an introduction. And here's kind of how I feel about it. It's like if you got two and a half hours to run a movie, and we can, if we have a movie, we just oh, this movie was amazing, this movie was awesome, it did what it needed to do. It's like when we have a show that comes out with five episodes, I have two and a half hours to run the same thing, but because it seems like because it's got to be broken up it doesn't do well or it feels like it breaks off at certain points and it's like it doesn't connect as well it doesn't flow as well so it's just like and i'm not saying you got to make everything a feature movie and stuff like that but you know maybe if you want to do a couple you know specials and stuff like that where they're like the made for tv movies where it's just like okay it's 90 minutes and we just kind of get to the point and Kind of get everything when are we going to get this expose where we're talking about all the different nationalities we're bringing in so you guys feel empowered by these cultures and you guys will put everyone from each demographic directly in the movie seats, Will? You're not thinking big picture. Disney wants your cash. Disney got to do this cash. because it's necessary. I don't know why. Look. I don't know how, but every time it just seems to be the same thing. Look, I'm all for diversity. Like when I it's love it. done I love it. correctly, I, I do want it done. Like correctly. it wasn't this one. I like I, this one. I I don't think they. I don't think. I don't think a lot of it was mishandled and stuff. Like all the the characters I've seen and stuff brought up. I don't think the the having the characters. The characters are fine. Bring the characters in. Like I love to see the characters, but just with the story writing, I need a little bit more synergy within the stories. Everything right now feels like a one off. Nothing feels connected. That's that's the, the original magic we had with the Marvel movies stuff felt connected all the way through like i tied everything together with a nice little, and it felt good so when we got to avengers like wow this was great when we got to civil war man they're bringing it all out when we got to infinity war and end game you know the culmination of it's like yo we got so much everything and it wasn't perfect we had some some dead movies in between there so they, they weren't the best too. with that but they still serve the purpose within the timeline to make everything connect. I don't like Kamala Khan's, you know, show was connected to the Marvels, which it needed to be. And now it's trying to connect to something larger, which, you know, Kate Bishop so that. But still, Kate Bishop still feels like it's off over here. But again, now you have to connect Marvels to, you know, Kate Bishop, who's in Hawkeye, which has Echo. And now we have Echo show. But now Echo is disconnected from this stuff over here unless they're going to take echo and bring her into the young avengers which she was part of all this you know at some point but you know she's got over there she's older now it's like yeah i mean i could do this all day literally reference intended Ah, he has to quote captain america so before we end up doing a two-hour special hit that subscribe button before will hurts himself tires himself out from defending his baby because i do the same thing with star wars so i'm not Mm. talking from a high ground I do the same thing he does. I'm a Brent. You mostly listen to him. I'll see you in the next one.